Here. 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 And we'll note that we have present from the um, Department of Public Works, Ted Gerber, our Public Works Director. I'd like to call the Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Hughes, will you lead us in the pledge? Yes, my pleasure. Everyone will stand, face the flag, ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Item number one on our agenda, as it always is, is public comment from the uh, uh, general public on any item that's not being discussed on our agenda today. Uh, do we have any written comments? I see nobody here or other notifications. Okay, so no public comment, we'll note that. And item number two on our agenda is the upcoming commissioner Congress. Um, we'd like to ask Ted Gerber to uh, inform, the, inform us about that. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair Fisher. And uh, good evening, commissioners and council and Mayor Pro Tem, sorry. Um, so the uh, city just recently announced that the commissioner Congress is returning this year. Uh, it's going to be held June 22nd, 2022, um, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the Memorial Building. This will be a joint council and commission's public meeting. So it will be a dinner for uh, council members and commissioners, and then uh, there will be an area for the public to um, view uh, the meeting and uh, possibly participate. Um, but the idea here is that we bring, the city brings all of the uh, commissions together so that each commission has the opportunity as they have in the past to number one, um, describe their annual accomplishments, which we've already summarized in MTEC's annual report. And then also give a very brief overview of uh, one or more work plan items that are planned for the uh, coming fiscal year. So the ask from uh, our city manager's office is that we um, reach out to the commissioners who have been uh, on the panel for the last couple of years since we've done this previously. Uh, and so our city staff will assist the commission in doing that and reaching out to the former commissioners to see if they would like to attend in addition to the present commissioners. And then also for the commission to uh, select a representative who will spend about two to three minutes and one to two PowerPoint slides to review the annual uh, report, one slide, and then any work plan items they would like to highlight. We don't necessarily have to go through the whole work plan, but just items they'd like to highlight for the coming year. Um, so there's a, there's a memo um, in the agenda that describes what I've just mentioned. Um, the only item I've left out, which we've talked about previously in this commission, is that the work plan items should align with the strategic plan. We had, we had already done that, talked about that previously, but um, some commissions are in different locations different positions in terms of developing their work plan for the year. So with that, um, are there any questions about the Commissioner Congress or would we like to talk about making arrangements to prepare for that? Well, Ted, Ted I have a question. We prepared our annual report for the calendar year and this mentions a report for the fiscal year. Uh, that is just fine. I, I don't, it's a technicality. Okay. I think what they really just want to talk about is your accomplishments. Okay. Um, so if you'd like to add in a few more, you can, but I think a lot of commissions are just putting together their annual reports now. And so they might be for a fiscal year because we're close to the end of it. But I think your 2021 annual report will just be fine. Um, as far as the work plan goes, we've talked about some interim work plan items in getting to this point. Um, if you'd like, we could work to formalize a 2020, a 22, 23 work plan in our next 
um, session in June, which will take place before this Congress. Um, or we can highlight some of the work plan items from the interim plan, um, which included, for example, slow streets and, and measure M and things like that. And Ted, one of the things I know we were waiting for with the budget was the question of having that finalized and the issue of the, um, the, the street maintenance and street repair work and the schedules and kind of what was the backlog and what's, what could go forward. And so do we think we'll have a better idea? Because that would be something we could highlight is down, you know, where people could see we're, we're doing these streets. And often they like to hear those concrete, you know, manifest into actual, this is this street that we're going to be. Sure, we could definitely. Surfacing, repaving, slurry ceiling, what have you. We could definitely have that prepared for you because we have a semblance of what our plan looks like. I'll talk a little bit about that tonight, either in our status report or our, my staff comments, depend, you know, how we want to do that. Uh, but yeah, we can certainly prepare for that for the Congress. Thank you. So Ted, our next meeting, if I'm reading the calendar right, is... Is it June 21st for this body? Um, yes, I thought it was earlier than that, but because that's the day before, I think, right? This Congress. So that might be awfully tight. Sure. Um, and again, it, it's not a formal um, report, it's really a presentation. So you could discuss those items tonight, um, or you could, uh, we could work with the chair and vice chair to come up with the items that we would like to discuss for the coming work plan, it's, you know, I wouldn't um, be too concerned about having some sort of set documentation for that evening. Really what we're turning in is a slideshow. A yeah, so we don't need that, need that formal work plan. Exactly, yeah. Us. It's really just a, it's your time to highlight your accomplishments and what your plans are for the coming year and really just be recognized for your service. So, you know, that's the main part that I left out but really you know, how much the city and the community appreciates the service that you're doing as a commissioner. And as you indicated, only three to five minutes, something like that, right? Yeah, it's very, very short because there's a lot of commissions to go through. And if I recall, I don't know if it's gonna be the same kind of way. If I remember the last time what we did was there was a template that the city's put together so that the template page, the PowerPoint page was sort of a template. And then we worked with, I mean, for Leona, whoever it was, but. We then provided these are our this is our copy and that went into the template so that we would then look at oh these are what your slides are going to look like and then present right. the slides. Yes, as far as presentations go, I mean I'm sure uh, we'd like to have it done well beforehand, but um, it's not unusual for us to have presentations ready the day of the meetings. Staff reports are different idea and agendas are different, but presentations we have a little bit of leeway. So if you really if you want to take a lot more time, you could, but. Um, honestly, it's something we could either accomplish in just these next few minutes to talk about, or um, like I said, we could uh, handle this with the chair and vice chair offline. I, I recommend that um, Vice Chair Dunlap and myself meet with you sometime after this meeting to prepare for uh, our work, the presentation of our work plan and our accomplishments, because we won't have any time between our June meeting and the commissioner meeting to really prepare anything? Sure, um, you know, the, the annual plan's been completed, so you could provide staff direction that we, we prepare ahead of time, um, a presentation that has the annual report accomplishments already on it, and then select a couple items from the work plan and have that prepared to, to show you. And, and maybe that can be, brought to the full commission the night before this for buy-in from the entire that's, group. That's what I was gonna say is I, I would definitely wanna <laughs> see it and be part of the conversation. I don't need to control it, but. Of course, and you know, um, I know it's strange this year because of the way that we've shifted from an annual, from a calendar year to a fiscal year, but in some cases the commissioners might select the chair from the previous year to do the annual report uh, part of it as that, as those accomplishments for the previous cycle, but it's really up to how you'd like to handle that. Do we decide that now or um, contemplate it? it in yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a formalized process. It's, so we could talk about it now if you'd like to, or we could just, I could communicate with you offline and we could sort that out. It's really just preparing you for what is to come in a month 
Um, my comment about the next meeting was that apart from the Commissioner of Congress, we could work to formalize our 22-23 work plan um, if you'd like. It doesn't have to influence what you can or does it not have to influence what you're talking about on the Congress evening? Well, I guess then we could uh, work on our work plan for the next fiscal year, but then we could bring it to the uh, commission meeting a couple of days before just to make sure everyone's on board. Sure. Yeah, I mean, even if you'd like to review it on the 21st, we could quickly make some changes to the presentation ready for the 22nd. That's not that's not a big deal. OK, so how, so we agendize for the next meeting, the 2022 2023 work plan. This is what I'm hearing. And there will be some proposal. Well, you're typically you'd have some kind of a draft plan for us to take a look at, I would think, as part of that conversation. Right? Exactly. And yes, if. if, if you all want to talk beforehand and pull out the few things that you want to highlight at the Congress, then we can cover that in the same discussion. Yes, I mean, just even from our even from our project status sheet right here and our on our interim work plan, which um, we had listed, th those items are listed on the status. We could you could even pick just a few things that you want to highlight for the for the Congress if you'd like. Yeah, and then we could review it again on June 21st to be sure. But certainly, yes, we'll agendize reviewing the staff proposed 22-23 work plan for June. Right. And then Ted, some of the things that were pending based on going to council and or budget, we should have finalized by then, such as the consultant contract we want for engineer, for traffic engineering and so uh, we had planned on that, um, but as part of my updates tonight, we got so much interest for on-call services that we actually decided to extend the window to apply for two weeks um, because we just got a barrage of questions about contract configuration and all that kind of stuff. So um, we will likely have our contractors selected by that evening on the staff side, but the final uh, council meeting, and it's a very busy evening, is June 15th um, because, so the next time we'll be able to bring that to council will be in July. So we won't have final contracts in place, but we'll have an idea of who we're selecting and, and what that would look like. I saw the extension mentioned, but I wasn't sure the timing. How yeah, gonna so we extended it to June out. 2nd. It was supposed to okay. uh, terminate tomorrow, um, but again, we had a lot of interest. Okay, any other comments by commission members? So just to be clear, just being a little. So at the next meeting, we're gonna talk about the work plan for the coming fiscal year, and we're gonna um, finalize the work plan highlights that will be presented to the Congress, Congress the following night. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And Chair Fisher and Vice Chair, Dunlap will be putting this together, but I will say if I, if I can help in any way, let me know. <laughs> sure. So, um, you know, uh, we could handle it similarly to the minutes. We can, Liana will work and I will work on this offline where we send a draft copy and then you give your, you want to review it and give your comments or something like that. We could do something like that. All right, uh, thank you for that information. I look forward to the Congress. Uh, the last one we had at the Armory was, was real nice. I'm sorry? The last one that we had at the Armory, when was it, three years ago, was real nice. And, or maybe it was two years, well, two and a half years ago. And it, it's, it's, it's a chance to meet commissioners from other, other boards, so. Okay. Uh, with that, we'll go now to our project status update. Again, um, Public Works Director Gerber has uh, developed a list and he shows the uh, status as either update status for uh, 
no change. So uh, you've had a chance to review the list. Do we have any uh, questions for Ted on the status of, of any project? I'll start with Commissioner Hughes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ted, just a couple things. The first item of the golf course, um, going to begin in late May. Do we know when it's going to end? Um, so we're, we're meeting on site tomorrow. The actual polls get delivered tomorrow. Um, and we expect it to take three weeks, uh, but we'll know a little bit better as we go through the plan tomorrow about, you know, we'll have to close off the um, pathway again. Uh, set the poles, and as we progress, we might have some delays, but we do expect it to be done within three to four weeks. Thank you. Also, on the next item, the traffic signal. Um, obviously, that's the they've got the product product recall there. Do we get our funding back at all, or any because of all the money we've spent and done? And is there? Um, so uh, the recall should be should come to resolution. It's just a delay. Um, the recalled. Uh, Thermal cameras will are just actually the boards are being changed out and then we'll actually get them. They'll be delivered. It's just delayed the project a little bit. So we shouldn't have any issue with um, funding or project completion. It's just that the project was delayed for a so short it's just time. Basically, we're not getting the equipment as we anticipated. Yeah, in the time that we anticipated it, but it's just delayed by a few weeks. Uh, but then it should pick up again um, by the end of this month and then we finish the project in June. And then I had a question on we will probably get to is the budget items that we have um, for the street repairs. Yes. And um, and kind of going back to the, you know, the 1920, 2021, I think it's the 18, 1819. I mean, I have kind of like where we are and I have all of those, but the question is, yeah, what have we done and what can we still complete? Sure. Um, so this might take a minute, but I'll go through uh, what's going on here. So um, the the city um, the city gets uh, what we call SB one funding. It's been in the past. It's been about four hundred thousand dollars. When we meet our maintenance of effort, which is basically expending one point four million dollars in terms of street repair. A few years ago, the city started. Well, I don't know if they started, or I just know that a few years ago the city was falling short of meeting that 1.4 million. That consideration from the state is over a two year period. So basically um, sometime within two fiscal years, you have to spend, expend that amount of money to get the money from the state. So the city started spending less than 1.4 million a year. And so uh, it would take until the following fiscal year over that two year period to actually meet the requirement. So as you can imagine, if you keep doing that, eventually you fall short for a whole year. Um, so uh, that started happening. Um, I think they, we, the last time we met our um, MOE was 2018, 2019. Um, 2019, 2020 was basically a forgiveness year where um, you didn't have to meet the MOE in order to receive the funding. Um, but since that time, 2021 and 2122, uh, the city has not had street expenditures and so therefore hasn't met its MOE. Um, so we've already cleared, we're about to clear a two year cycle, we've not gotten the MOE. MOE. Um, now, apart from the funding what issue, we have what work has actually been done. So as it stands, uh, Right now, we are um, working on the designs for the 2019-2020 street selection. So the city, um, the commission recommended and the council adopted street lists for 2019, 20, uh, 2019 20, 2021, and 2122. So we're, we're a little less than three years behind in terms of the work done. So in in pulling all this information together, uh, we were trying to figure out whether we were even eligible to make a request for funding this year um, and how that would work. We also have um, about two and a half million dollars of funding that's already been designated uh, that hasn't been spent. 
So after going through all this uh, evaluation, um, we found that we would likely be, we, we thought at first that we wouldn't be making a funding request this year. But now in, in terms of looking, after looking at it, we expect to make a, a, a funding request this year to start a new MOE cycle. Um, and we would normally have come to commission to select streets, but in looking at the cost to actually implement streets and how much we haven't done, uh, we, we're planning on our funding request just being more money for the streets that we've already selected. So in other words, we have three years of streets that have not been done uh, and we have a lot of money, but we don't have that much money. So we're going to actually make a request for uh, expenditures based on our current street listing. So we, what we'll do is we will, uh, I'll talk about catching up in terms of the work to be done, but as far as coming to the commission for request, we'll start that process again in 22-23, where you will make a new street selection um, to submit at the, you know, to submit in the next fiscal year uh, based on, you know, the previous, con you know, the condition index and, and the priority and things like that. Does the list that exists where you're going back three years that haven't been done, does that need to be reconsidered based on conditions? Because when they were looked at a few years ago, potentially, they were certain levels of the CPI, you know, all their grading and all of that. And some have perhaps had because of weather or traffic. Does that need to be considered? And looked at, or who's going to make that determination? Does it need to be looked again? So, if we were looking at Pine Street, which was one of the streets, or Maple, or some of these, do they need to be rethought of? Like, if you're saying you can't do everything, does the full gamut need to be looked at, and like what should be given priority? It's a very good point, and we were actually having that discussion just a couple hours ago. Um, so, not just if there needs to be things to be prioritized based on condition but also with considering the other transportation projects we're looking at, um, would those fulfill the street resurfacing requirements? In other words, are we double booking money in some locations? Um, so that will be an evaluation that we would do and bring this to the commission uh, for consideration in the, in the new street list. And if there's any reconsideration, we don't think there's gonna be a major impact. It might be a, a couple locations that are impacted, but for the most part that, the already decided street list moves forward. In fact, the 1920 street list, since it's already complete with design, will move forward as is because the, the design package is nearly done and we want to actually get that bid, you know, as soon as possible. We're looking on the order of, you know, months to get that, you know, a couple of months to get that completed right. and on the street. Um, does that answer your question? Okay. Then I think I had um, the neighborhood traffic management. Do we know when that's going to go to city council? Um, not yet, because when we we when we took a, a look at what had been done, um, all of the commission's work uh, was fantastic, and it's it's ready to go to council, with the exception of um, the big question about how the process will work. Like, how does a request go from a resident's mind into the system. And so what we're looking at now is what type of uh, basically, you know, web interface infrastructure do we need to have that set up? Because when we adopt it with council, we'd like to show that program and have it working at the time. Um, so that's one of our uh, early work to accomplish when we have our on-call contractors in place in July is to set up the um, form system to gather the submissions and then you know have that have that ready for council because we don't want to implement another like uh, paper form system. Uh, we've already transitioned our permit uh, system to online you know in a rudimentary way. There's more work to be done there, but uh, we want that system to be set up that way as well. And last question was um, looking again at the mechanism to try to get accident data, Meridian. Yes. And so, you know, with, with PD or whatever, so we can figure out there's, there is some way to get data on a regular basis 
we know we get the police blotter of that, but a lot of times this is their way to kind of capsulize if it is traffic accidents and or um, property damage caused by accidents, you know, vehicles. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, the police process um, is a bit interesting. We make requests um, and then they basically give us like redacted um, paper reports about what had happened. And so um, that process we expect to improve when the police are finished implementing their CAD RMS system that they recently purchased. But on the other side of that, um, uh, in consideration of uh, some of the other projects we have going on, we've recently pulled all of the accident data for South Pasadena for the last 12 years out of the Switter system. And uh, we have that organized by uh, street. Um, we have an idea how we can better organize that to visualize it for you. We actually are looking at um, a way to encapsulate all those accidents on uh, a GIS map. Um, and so if you're looking for specific data um, for an area in time, such as Meridian, we can readily give that to you now. And so if you'd like us to bring that back for review, for discussion, uh, we could agendize that now. And it so, would be very helpful. Yeah, that, that's a process we just worked out over the last couple years, of years. Where all, you know, where are these repeat accidents or locales that have, that have had accidents, you know, property damage, et cetera. Yeah, that was helpful. For example, we did that evaluation on the southbound Orange Grove from Columbia to the 110 and found that there was 53 accidents there over the course of like 11, 12 years. And we have the data that shows what type of accidents they were and who, how many were injured. So we have that for everything out of sweaters. It took a while to pull everything and then compile it, but we have the complete set. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Ortiz. Uh, Commissioner Abelson. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Fisher. So just to follow up quickly on the Switters information. So with the data you have collected, um, you can generate a list that shows, for lack of a better term, the hotspots. So the, the sort of locate segment by segment, which segments are the ones that are that suffer the greatest number of accidents and sort of like a, a priority list like that. Is that possible? It's possible. Um, what I'll say is that that would be the next step. What we have right now is we have, we've taken all the Switters raw data. Um, we've assembled it into a database that we can view as tables um, for if we want to select a particular street and a particular set of intersections, we can. Great. Um, now, if we wanted to do hotspot analysis, the next step for us is to actually convert that data to um, location-based data. And so what we would do is we basically take you know, we have the intersection. I don't want to, I don't know how technical I want to get, but we have the intersections and then we have the distance from the intersections in which direction. So let's say we have an accident that occurred 30 feet north of street A and street B. So now we have like a vector based on that intersection. So part of our on call services is GIS, um, uh, GIS professional services. And so we would make a request that they feed this information to actually create. Um, uh, a mapping, and then we can do, we would basically do like a boundary analysis um, and identify how many incidents occurred over how such, a, we, we would set a boundary for a number of incidents that occurred over a certain area from an intersection, and then we'd be able to prioritize based on that analysis, you know, which places we want to look at. Well, that's great. That's great. That, that would be, I think, very helpful going forward. Um, as time and resources permit. And, and, and right now, what we can do at a minimum is organize it by street name. Exactly. So if we had a request to say, let's look at all the accidents on street A uh, from such and such, such as that, we can actually pull that information oh, out of our, our database. I'll say database is basically a set of Excel sheets um, right now. Well, that's fantastic. Well, great. Well, thank you for, for doing that. Of course. Um, so I, I, Kim uh, stole my thunder, but I'm just going to follow <laughs> quickly on that. I know it's great. Um, people don't have to listen to me as long. So uh, for street improvements, I recall, and we have our historian here who may have the documents, but I thought we were going further back in terms of streets that had been approved for uh, resurfacing, but had not yet been done. I thought we were going back to like 2018, 2019, because here I just have, it says 2019, 2020. I thought we had streets yet to be completed that were older than that. 
Does that um, sound at all? I mean, there's a street. I know it's a good. I, I so I'm, I'm not ticky tack. No, that's no, fine. I assume right. since 1920 was in design that we had already completed 1819. So what I'll what we'll do as an action item is we'll take a look at uh, 1819 to see if those streets have already been completed. I I, I didn't know that, so okay. I'll look at that. I, and it may yeah. be part of what you're working on, and just not designated as such. But like, there's an, one street is. Uh, Sterling Place, just as an example, you know, the asphalt is barely there, and it's on one of our one of the lists that, that we had recommended and council approved, and right. And I, it may be something you're working on. I just, uh, no, we we were looking at 1920. Okay, present. So I'll. So I'm wondering well, if there is a way, perhaps, before the next meeting or at the next meeting, to to just give us a list of here are the streets that we where designs completed or 60% completed or whatever the status is. So whatever, whatever the fiscal year is, we know these are all the streets that you're working on. And if there is a gap, we can identify it. That'd be very Hopefully helpful. Hopefully there isn't one. Yeah, okay. that'd be very helpful. Yes, yeah, so, we'll, we'll, so we'll, we'll agendize a review of the um, street lists for the last five years, unless you think uh, we should go back further. No, definitely, okay. I don't think further. That's generous, I think that's okay. fine. And so a list of, you know, right, the street list and what, where, what you have in the pipeline. Um, and hopefully they, there's some similarity between the two. Um, I'm sure there is. Um, and then the only other quick questions were, with regard to the Measure R funded projects uh, and the, the Fremont um, Active Transportation, also known as the $6 million grant, it's in here, so uh, that's fine. Um, are we okay in terms of milestones, deadlines, things like that? Are we okay in terms of not r any risk of losing access to the funding? Uh, yes, we are okay. Um, the MAT funding, we, uh, re we submitted a new timeline that starts in July and takes a little over three years, this July, 2022. Um, so that will align nicely with bringing our consultant teams on board. Uh, that's for the 6 million uh, MAT money. Uh, we have to finalize that agreement. There was like one other detail that has to be done. There was that we have to finalize that funding agreement. For the Measure R money, um, there was a timeline, but I think there's a lot more flexibility in that. Um, as I had mentioned in our previous uh, commission meeting, um, Metro had reached out about modifications to our Measure R funding agreement because of the changes to Measure R across the board and the policy changes and organizational changes at Metro. Um, the next step was to arrange a meeting with Caltrans and Metro about those projects. So we've reached out to both and we just have yet to set a date uh, that should occur before our next commission meeting. Um, but in that, we'll confirm that there's no issues with the funding agreement timelines. In fact, we'll probably reset the timeline um, given that some time has passed and it would make more sense clearly to, since we haven't started the work to reset the timeline. Okay, that's yeah. great. And I was, just, I was particularly ner nervous about R because other cities have, you know, made progress or they're further along. And I was worried that we might get up against some, some deadline issues, but sure, I, we're okay. I, I think we'll be okay, but I'll, um, I'll have another update for you okay. on that and our next status report to confirm. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Abelson. Uh, Vice Chair Dunlap. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's, it's interesting that we have this unofficial agenda item on crash data. Um, I was thinking about that earlier today, and um, I'm certainly available to assist with that. I probably spend 30 hours a week working with crash data in GIS. So um, it was something I wanted to bring up to see if possibly maybe a, a conversation could be had with Chief Selensky around when they fill out the CHP 555 form, the traffic collision report, there's a spot for latitude and longitude coordinates. And so um, when, uh, when an officer fills out that report, if they can begin recording that, um, you're able to ge geocode it in, in GIS, so. Yeah, um, in reviewing the data, we had maybe one, a couple of records that had that in there, but it mm -hmm. wasn't. Um, we, could, we could talk to, uh, police department about their process and how they go about doing it. Um, you know, as you know, lats and longs, difficult to handwrite on a report. So we'll have to see if their process really makes it easy for them to capture that data and get into the system. 
Yeah, or yeah. sometimes it's done like back in the office on mm-hmm. Google Maps. You can write sure. you can say that what's here sense. and it'll give you the latitude and longitude. We can ask them if that, that's something they could do. Yeah, I think yeah. Um, that would, you know, as you're looking to move forward and modernize your crash data, especially if you're going to put it into GIS, you're going to need some sort of spatial, um, sort of spatial coordinates. And I think um, probably the CHP is doing a little bit of that cleaning up for you right now when it goes there. Yeah, we did. There was CHP data in there as well. Um, so uh, yeah, that might have been the ones that had the lat long data, the ones that were reported yeah. by CHP. Well, any way that I can like help support those data efforts, um, certainly let me know. Um, the only project I had a question on was I heard in the news around Pasadena um, approving the relinquishment of the stub, if, um, if I'm not mistaken, and. I know there's probably interest in the community kind of being involved in that and being aware, um, you know, as far as um, our commission and the broader community, like, um, do you know kind of how um, we'll be engaged throughout this process? Yes, um, so we've been meeting regularly with Pasadena. We have a set meeting once a month now um, to talk about just inner city is- inner, uh, jurisdictional issues and in including this. Um, the way I think the best way to describe that process is it's basically like a three step process. Um, the relinquishment, which is moving forward at, with the uh, California Transportation Commission in June. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, and uh, the next step is what Pasadena calls transitional projects. And they release an RFP. And I don't know if they've awarded it yet, but that is basically how they're going through their measure R. Um, part of their measure our um, project selection process. Um, so in that RFP, it actually included work on um, Columbia Street that we've talked about as a joint process. And in, in our measure M efforts, we understand that their funding source for the, the shared work will be from measure R. Um, and so really what they're looking at in these transitional projects is returning the area streets like St. John and Pasadena to, you know, I don't know if they would technically qualify as complete streets, but, um, you know, reestablishing walkways and things like that. Um, and so that's their transitional project step, that second step. And then their third step, which is a little farther along, is the um, revisioning process. That's when uh, they've basically, since they've relinquished the area um, that, you know, we colloquially refer to as the ditch in north of California. Um, they would go through a, a land use evaluation, um, and that's when they would start to talk about the more um, expensive and more um, large-scale projects. And so as far as uh, our involvement, um, the, as they're reaching out to stakeholders, they'll consider our city a stakeholder in talking about these transitional projects and also the revisioning process. Um, now the June the relinquishment step in June, uh, we mostly understand how that will go. Um, basically, um, there's that ditch property, that rectangular property that has to be relinquished. But um, though uh, St. John and Pasadena roadways are under Pasadena's control, there's a corridor of uh, you know sidewalks, I guess, like right away for lack of a better term, along those routes that is not, that it still has to be relinquished through Cal- Caltrans, which is you know, prevented moving forward with that transitional projects until that area is relinquished. Um, so there's a whole bunch of documents that are wrapped up in describing this whole thing. Um, and we're waiting for those to be available on the CTC June board meeting website. They, they haven't posted that information yet. Um, so we'll do a little bit more research on that as it comes out. But yeah, there's this basically this three you know, I, I don't know if they would describe yeah. it this way. No, I appreciate basic. you kind of walking, yeah. walking, <clears throat> walking us through those steps. I, I don't know if I quite understood there was step one, kind of step. They two, don't, ref- they don't call it that. Right. But that's how I've come to understand it. And if you were to put like right a now. timetable on those steps, um, just rough back of the envelope um, for step one, step two, and step three, what would you predict? So step one should occur right. within months, you know, June. Um, I don't know if it would be continued past that or if it would be completed in June. Um, the RF, the transitional projects, uh, the RFP is out. And I don't know if it's been selected. And so those projects would be um, 
budgeted and completed, I would assume on the order of months to year, year and a half or so. Like five, 10 years or something. Like yeah, that. I mean, they're transitional projects. So it, you know, it's really about like, um, it's not significant transportation changes. It's more like more straightforward roadway configurations. Like for example, when we redo a sidewalk, we typically don't go through a design process. We use Caltrans standards and rebuild the sidewalk. Um, so, you know, I don't know the extent of that, but the revisioning process is a years long mm -hmm. process, that third step, which I think they expect to start that process at the end of this year. Um, and so that's the timetable they've given us. But I think during the outreach, uh, we'll learn a little bit more about how this works. My understanding is that relinquishment is such an important step. Nothing else can happen without it. That a lot of the focus and energy and concern has been over that. Um, and all of these other steps have been to get ready for the future, but um, there's no defined plans yet, but maybe, you know, there, there may be that we just don't fully understand just yet. Thank you for the update. That's all, Chair. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Dunlap. Um, I just had uh, basically one comment on the uh, timing improvements at the Metro Bowl Line and Mission and Meridian. Um, this has been an ongoing uh, subject, and I know Commissioner Hughes has uh, raised the issue of what's the status of it. I'm pleased to report that uh, um, a few days ago, um, Mr. Gerber and I met at Mission Meridian at the uh, Jones Coffee, and uh, we looked at the operation, and, and he was able to see more specifically what improvements can be made. Uh, so I, I was pleased that we had that meeting. Um, the uh, summary says that uh, you will be working with Metro on, on the, the, improve, the improvements. Uh, Metro, I think, needs to be involved, uh, more specifically those who operate the train to make sure the um, timing of the signal gates is appropriate, but they've already taken care of that. I think now the focus has to be how do we handle the congestion and the traffic at the intersection. So we may need a combination of not only Metro consultants, but maybe one of the on-call consultants that we will ultimately be contracting with to help us with the signal timing and the options available. Definitely. Okay. Um, that was my only comment. Mr. Chair, I have two quick follow-ups yes. to your comment and Commissioner Dunlap. So I want to make sure I understood something Ted said just a bit earlier. Did you say that St. John and Pasadena were under were now under Pasadena's control or not yet? Um, in terms of the, the the signals, traffic management, all that kind of stuff. Not not, not all yet. of it. Um, when they brought this item to their council a couple of weeks ago, they provided a map to show what the relinquishment area would be and there's the obvious area to the north but then there's there's kind of like curvy corridors that sort of move down all the way down to columbia so yeah, we're familiar with it okay yeah so <laughs> um so no i i it's not within their control until the relinquishment um you know i know specifically about the signal versus the roadway versus the sidewalks right. i don't have all that in front of me but i it, it's very clear that there's not enough under their control to make modifications okay you got to where I was going, so okay. I appreciate that. And then a uh, follow up to uh, Chair Fisher's comments regarding the gold line intersections. My understanding when we talked about this, I think it was the prior commission and funding was allocated for improving the, the, the efficiency and the operation of those intersections, that it wasn't just Mission Meridian, I believe, that it, it also it included. Um, Monterey, Pasadena, um, I might call it the foremost or the Charlie's Trio intersection, that, that there were a couple of intersections, I think, where we were looking at opportunities to improve timing and efficiency. Does that sound right to you? Or is the focus only on Mission Meridian? I, it's probably been too long. I don't recall the discussion on uh, Monterey, Pasadena. Because I think we, there were similar we were noticing at the time similar delays and challenges there in terms of how long the 
arms, arms were down. Arms were down based right. on. And that's an even more complicated intersection. Okay. I know, well, but... I, I don't know about that one. Um, <laughs> I don't walk there for coffee, although I, I occasionally <laughs> drive there. To Charlie's there Street. is a coffee shop down there, yeah. you know. Come on, John. Yeah. So, um, so maybe there's so I, I haven't watched it to know specifically what the problems are, but uh, and maybe we if, if we want to you and I to go down there sometime and look at it, we can. But I know at the uh, crossing on Fremont, where there's uh, a signal, um, we again have the problem where the uh, crosswalks are really offset quite a distance from the curb lines. And therefore, uh, right turns may not see a pedestrian in the crosswalk because it's hidden at the at the view they have when they stop. So, I know Fremont would would be one where that could benefit from some of the uh, um, improvements we talked about at Mission Meridian. And regarding um, Pasadena uh, Monterey, maybe we need to go there so I can refresh my memory on it if you remember something. Sure. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, thank you for that summary and thank you for having it in writing. It's very helpful. We'll go now to our next agenda item, which is uh, an action item, approval of the minutes from our April 19th, 2022 meeting. Um, did everyone have a chance to review the minutes and are there any modifications I that need to be made? I just had a quick question. Um, I don't know if this had all the comments that I had. The other thing is it says Chair Abelson at the top and I know I corrected that to say Chair Fisher. So. And it does say Chair Fisher right below it. So I guess they just missed. And because this is what I have submitted and <laughs> this is what we have, so. Good catch. I didn't even catch that one. <laughs> no, I... Oh, I pulled the one for the web the website and it says Chair Fisher. Yeah, mine says Chair Fisher. Maybe there was multiple versions. Okay. I'll go with Chair Fisher. So <laughs> do, do you feel your comments been in, uh, incorporated into the minutes? Well, no, but it's okay. I mean, if everyone else is, this is what I had put in. Which I think this is the one as well. Yeah. So. The only thing I wanted I want to speak to you, but I know um, where it said you were excited. I thought maybe you wanted to say expressed enthusiasm because it just seemed to be. Where, where is that? Where, where, where was that, uh, Ken? Oh, he expressed excitement. Yeah. How about elation? Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty <laughs> exciting. You know, I don't know. Right. Exuberance. Yeah. yeah. Right. That was okay. Roger's thesaurus. Oh. So, so just so I know, are we changing it or what are we doing? What do you want to do? It was just okay. Okay. Do we have any um, amendments we want to make or or not? I I, oh, I, I know I know. Um, Commissioner um, Hughes spends a lot of time reviewing these. And, uh, refining well, I can pass so this and see if everyone agrees or we don't have to. I mean, it depends on, you know, kind of, again, the scope of how broad we want to be and make right. comments or not make comments, I guess. I don't have any changes to the minutes. I do, but I'll wait for Commissioner Hughes. This is the, yeah, first, the then, first month I didn't see them because I'm no longer chair, so. Yeah. I mean, generally they were fine. I just had a couple of things. So all the red are you, those are your proposed. But we can we can ignore all those. Well, I mean, process wise, if if you generally when you submit a comment, it's incorporated, right? Unless there are many unless changes unless going can, back yeah, and unless, forth. Yeah, but it's it's fine. So I may not have picked up that maybe your yeah. some of your comments weren't incorporated when I saw my graph. Oh. which was like a couple days later later okay. so I'll, I'll try to catch that next time okay. um, i'm just reading her red line of 
that right so I'll, i won't take we won't take action on this until you've had a chance to look at it and uh, commissioner dunlap has had a chance to look at it i'm also checking to see if she if commissioner Hughes captured my I know in the, the under the second page, Chair Fisher com commented on where it also said he also and expressed so that we would take out maybe the and there if that's if we want to minimize. Where is that? All that. Well, Leona, I notified you about the two ends. They came out, right? Okay. So, so that did you, come out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do, if it makes, if it's okay with everybody, is I'm just going to mark up your red line. With okay. my changes and then they're all together and then if everybody's okay with it boom yeah if everyone okay. wants to make it then we just okay we're good and if you see something you don't like just cross it out oh good i'm just kidding no, or maybe at this point, if it doesn't make a lot of difference, we can overlook it. Yeah. In the interest of time. I don't have. Commissioner Dunlap, do you want to see things that are changed? Okay. You want Commissioner Dunlap's like what I know what we did before. As I think is uh, Liana would send them to Kim, Kim would red line them, then she would send them to me for sort of a final review, and then I would send them back to Liana. Yeah, I copied That's, Sean, but it's, it's fine. Yeah, the, the process I'd like to follow is I'd like to have Kim to be the first review, yeah. give them to Liana, Liana incorporates them, then sends them to me. Yeah. Rather than well, you're the them. chair. Yeah, I was just yeah. telling you what I might right, right. So, uh, Commissioner Abelson, do you want to read the amendments that you're proposing for uh, for the minutes? Uh, but not Kim's. Well, or maybe what we can do, Leona, is you can take. What we can do is add. Well, since it's all written, and you, I think you have, we can say as amended. So he doesn't have to read it all, and then you could take it all. That way, it, it speeds it up. Uh, it's okay with me it's okay with you yeah, yeah are are any sub sub substance oh boy substantive uh changes being made no no it's all wordsmith editing right yeah when i added a okay. phrase in the commissioner communications okay um unless i'm out of line i'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes as amended i'll second and we will give the copy to Leona. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. It's unanimous. Thank you. So I think we maybe we just got a little mixed up on the process. We yeah, we can. We'll we'll sort it all out. All and, right. And uh, Leona does such a wonderful job getting them all together. Absolutely. Okay, so our one really big item on the agenda is the recommendations to the city council on the slow streets program. Um, again, I'm optimistic and I would like to see that our meetings are no longer than two hours. 
So we started 15 minutes late. So I'd like to take, I'd like to make sure we have uh, action on this by 8.30. And uh, so make the comments you need to make, try to keep them concise. But why don't we have a presentation on this by uh, Mr. Gerber. Thank you. Um, so, uh, you know, a, a brief history of our Slow Streets program. Um, as many of you know, uh, we had um, received a grant uh, a couple of years ago from for an open streets grant that got repurposed. Um, and the idea was to utilize that money um, for a COVID relief program slash al fresco dining program um, in which uh, you know, parklets have been implemented out on Mission, Ave, uh, Mission Street. And the, the idea behind the Slow Streets program was to temporarily reconfigure Mission Street, perhaps to a one lane in each direction roadway um, to increase the experience of utilizing the street as more of a slow open streets concept. Um, there was also a residential component to that program that implemented temporary uh, bike lanes and slow street fe features along some of the residential streets in the city. Um, that, uh, that program changed at the end of 2021 as the grant was expiring. And though some work was done towards that initial goal, um, the rest of the year, as you know, was focused on uh, utilizing the grant money to purchase materials that could be utilized for a future Slow Streets program in 2022. Um, so comes, come along 2022, we uh, petitioned city council to uh, ensure that we had a, a budget for the Slow Streets program. Um, we have submitted a grant application to uh, the San Gabriel Valley COG for some additional money to implement that program. I'm working on that right now. Um, and so as we worked with their, our uh, consultant to develop a proposal for what the 2022 program would look like, a slow streets program, we started to ask some fundamental questions about uh, what was the objective of this program, considering all the things that had sort of changed since the initial concept uh, one or two years ago. And so um, in city staff's perspective, uh, we looked at this as an opportunity to uh, envision, temporarily envision what a permanent change um, to Mission Street could look like, and even the residential streets as well. And so when we talked to our consultant about this being um, not just a demonstration project and a, and a pandemic relief, which um, you know, largely is not the public focus anymore, about permanently restructuring mission one day and adding slow streets features permanently to these other residential streets one day, um, how, would, how would we accomplish that shift of vision in, in this 22, 22 slow streets program? Um, and some of the feedback was, well, number one, uh, we probably need a longer implementation. Um, and a longer implementation means uh, we use different materials. We might shy away from using things like tape uh, on the Mission Street section and actually work on putting down uh, semi-permanent paint. Um, we may have to look at, uh, we have our traffic analysis that was done uh, at the Mission Meridian intersection, but there may be other aspects of traffic analysis that we need to do along the rest of that area, along the rest of that corridor to uh, envision what this could look like permanently. Um, there's a whole, uh, a different type of outreach program um, because the outreach program is now uh, going to be focused, not focused, but in addition have a, a feedback component to it, an iterative feedback component where um, we are actively trying to gain uh, information back from the you know, businesses and the residents and the people who utilize the street to see what's working and what's not. Um, there may be uh, a desire to change certain aspects of the configuration during the implementation as we're learning about it. Um, and so this really changes uh, a, any type of proposal that we would bring to the council um, to be implemented. Um, 
And it's really comes down to a policy decision about what direction is Slow Streets, uh, what direction would this project be taking the city? Is it just a temporary setup um, uh, for some you know, temporary goal or is it a uh, semi, uh, a longer temporary demonstration for a more permanent goal? And so that also changes the cost of the program and, and how it would be done. So uh, what we're looking for is a recommendation on three specific items uh, to council um, with MTEC's feedback on what uh, you um, would consider to be what you'd like to see um, in this process. Uh, and it's just a recommendation. Uh, once you uh, give us that input, um, we're also looking for um, public feedback on this. We would work with our uh, consultant to finalize a proposal um, to bring it to council. And that wouldn't be the end of the story. That would just be the beginning of um, number one, the residential streets implementation, which would be pretty rapid to implement once we notify um, the uh, stakeholders and, and hold some um, brief outreach with them to show them what would be done. But that design is largely done. But we would come back to MTEC with the uh, analysis of the um, traffic and the traffic uh, impact analysis um, and also the final design um, or the iterative and then final design for the uh, mission street uh, section. So um, there's some other details listed here in the staff report about how uh, that outreach would look um, and then our next steps, of course. Uh, but the recommendation we're looking for um, is you know, is city staff on target in updating this goal um, of the program from pandemic relief to a demonstration that would uh, could become permanent once we receive feedback? Um, modifying the original planned uh, three month demonstration period along Mission Street to a six month demonstration. And we could talk about what the impacts of that would be because, for example, if we were to start this demonstration in late summer. Would we want to go through the holidays, have this configuration through the holiday season, and then uh, decommission it uh, early in 2023? And then um, are you in support of, you know, or do you have comments on uh, expanding the public outreach to not just occur before the installation, but to actually have um, continuing uh, subsets of outreach with the area businesses, and then also the people along the route that are interacting um, uh, with the equipment and you know, with the new configuration uh, so that we can, number one, gather that feedback for a final report and a recommendation on a permanent installation. Um, and then number two, any sorts of um, observations that we make about changes that we might wanna make during the demonstration. So it's a lot more of an interactive approach um, and a, you know, long-term visioning versus a, a sort of a quick setup um, an experience and then a, and then a quick uh, takedown. So uh, I can answer any questions you have about um, specifics, but that's what we're looking for tonight. Okay, I plan to go to each commissioner, but uh, I'll first ask, do we have any uh, comments from the public? Okay. All right, uh, just real quick before I go to the other commissioners, I think there was a study that looked at the impact of reducing lanes on um, Mission Street and, and where the traffic would go and such. Uh, was there such a study and why wasn't that information provided to us at, as of this time? Sure, um, so there was a study conducted that looked at the um, lane reduction, the road diet, and also um, optional closure of uh, the section of uh, Meridian between El Centro and Mission. Um, and so the, the study work um, was largely completed in, for 2021, um, but it was completed at the end of the year. And the pro our program and our work include at the end of the year because of our budget expiration. And so that study is complete and ready to be evaluated by um, our planning and engineering team 
and also to be, you know, um, digested and brought forth to you to review, but that would be part of this 2022 iteration. So the, the general reason why it wasn't brought forward is because the program has literally been on hold from then until we have a new proposal in place to uh, reconvene. Okay, and does part of their effort include looking at mitigation measures? Yes, yeah, the, um, the new program would suggest uh, mitigation measures uh, based on um, the analysis and the uh, design. Okay, thank you. With that, I will go to each commissioner for comments or questions. Um, Maybe we could have several rounds if there's a lot, if there are a lot of questions, I'd like to keep uh, your first round to about three minutes and then we'll, we'll go back. So I'll start with Commissioner Hughes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have a couple. Um, one to your point about a traffic study, I believe we did a pilot demonstration of closing lanes on mission around 2007-ish, eight, somewhere in there. Anyone recalls that? And I don't know where the data. I recall it, but not the date. Yeah, I don't know where the data is, but we did do that. Um, and if I recall, people were not happy, but because it wasn't really explained, all of a sudden it was like there's just no lane there. It was very strange. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if there is that data and what what the report might be or the evaluation. And then. Um, to your point on the equipment, things that we ordered to try to get in before the deadline uh, ending in 2021, do we know what we've received? I know you talked about the flashers and some of those, that equipment and what was going to be available, but the actual parklet structures, I know we were, those were going to be shipped. And do we know what is on route or what we've received or if there's variations? Because now, again, we're looking at a longer time period. But those seem to be semi-permanent or more of a, a ongoing structure as opposed to something that was very temporary. Do we know where we are with the equipment? Yes, um, we received most of the equipment that we ordered that we could afford under the older program. We spent about $408,000 out of the $420,000 that we had in the grant money. Um, what we haven't received yet are those parklet devices. We expect to receive them. Um, in the next couple of months. And so that's, we, but we could start the project before we receive them because obviously those come in at the end when we actually do the installation. So there shouldn't be any delay in the work for receiving those. Um, we would actually probably just store them temporarily like we've done with the other equipment. Um, but you're right, they are much more than uh, temporary equipment. They're actually uh, well-structured um, expensive equipment and they're designed for appropriate drainage and adjustment and that kind of thing. Um, so that, that Part of this six month demonstration would be like, how well do those things last and what's the maintenance requirement on them? And could they be part of a more permanent setup? And what would the ongoing maintenance and replacement costs be for those types of things permanently? The one to, thing to kind of think about is if we're gonna put these out there is the timing. Because as you say, if we could do late summer where the weather's gonna be great as opposed to getting them in, oh, we can't put those until November. And then you worry about, oh, then we gotta heat it. and that kind of issue. Um, and then to, to kind of dovetail to that is when you talk about the outreach, this is again, this, these kind of structures and how it's gonna look needs to really be put forth to the community, to the chamber, the businesses, the residents. And I know you say you're gonna do that, but I also would suggest, cause I didn't see it, you said in person, but I also think there should be some sort of electronic Zoom WebEx opportunity. Cause a lot of people, still might have re hesitation to get together and have that option so they could voice their, their input and their um, opinions, as well as perhaps doing a la a survey monkey, something where we could also put a survey out there, similar to we've done for the city to get uh, feedback on how people vision, envision this, what they see, how they would use it. The other last point um, would be to try to coordinate so that we could, whenever we do this, that we can make it something that becomes an event. We can take advantage of it as a city to bring people together, to have an activity, to build the businesses, to bring in visitors, guests, and revenue. 
So it's not just, again, like kind of happened when they closed that street a number of years ago with Mission, it just all of a sudden is there. That we do it, and if we're gonna do it, that we do it appropriately and take advantage of it. Because it's, it's a very hefty expend, expenditure that gives us some opportunity to do something special. Okay, all very good points. Thank you, Commissioner Hughes. Commissioner Abelson. Uh, thank you, Chair Fisher. Uh, Ted, I just want to confirm that tonight, what you're asking for is direction regarding the scope of a new professional services agreement, I'm assuming with Alta, is that correct? Yeah, that, that's how we would, that's what our expectation is, is that we would be able to continue with the same team. Okay. Um, we think we can work that out with how the procurement would work. Um, and so then your uh, recommendation would formulate into how the proposal is structured. Um, and then we would take that proposal to council. Okay. Um, so when I look at points, so and what you're asking us is uh, our opinions or thoughts on items one, two, and three uh, at the top of the staff report. So uh, I'm generally supportive of all three. You know, this, we've been talking about this for a year and a half or so, and the original intent was quick build as part of the pandemic relief and that didn't happen. So um, I think it makes sense to sort of rethink the approach. I think that's smart and I appreciate that. Um, I also like the idea of moving forward with the residential while the Mission Street component takes a bit longer. So I'm certainly good with that too. Um, a couple of thoughts I just wanted to share is that, I guess whether it's three months or six months, we're still talking about sort of a, a pilot approach to this, because I know my understanding generally is that the business community is as, as a whole, but not maybe every particular member um, is supportive of this concept. And one of the marketing elements of it is that, well, whatever it is, don't worry, it's temporary, right? We're gonna see how it goes and then we're gonna make longer term decisions based on that. So whether it's three months or six months, it's still temporary. So I think that's fine. And I think it makes sense to give it a fair shot, especially given how much money has been invested in the equipment. So I think I'm, I'm fine with that. The one thing that makes me nervous though is, are we building in a lot more time to get something implemented for Mission Street? You know, they've, we've been talking about it for a while. People would like to see something happen. And when we convert from a three month to a six month program, does that increase significantly the, amount, the sort of the run up time, the, the amount of the lead time needed to get something going? Because I'm all about, you know, let's get it done, let's get it done. And so I worry, are we going to spend another two years discussing something um, instead of moving forward? And so I was just worried, are we unnecessarily increasing how much time we're going to spend preparing for it and meeting about it and talking about it um, because it's now a longer term approach? Um, the answer is we don't think so because of the way because of the early work that was already done, we already have a pretty decent design for Mission Street. And it's really just about going through the impact analysis evaluation, um, refining it, and then bringing it to you for um, review. Um, if anything, the thought is that it'll increase the duration cost and actually the, um, the time, the need to have a very um, well, thought out uh, decommissioning off the street. Because if we're gonna do, we're gonna put more permanent materials down, um, there's a thought about, you know, how do we remove the new lines? How do we remove the new parking? How do we move things out of there? Maybe the park would stay, but um, how do you put the street back? Um, and also you do it in a way that, as Commissioner Hughes had described, uh, people have gotten used to driving on the street for six months and then all of a sudden it's, it's gone and it's different. It's, you know, so we think that actually um, the same amount of work goes into the leading edge of it, and some of that's already been done. It's actually the duration about the observation and the feedback cycle during it. And then our big emphasis is how do we put this back? Because um, we're very excited to implement it, and we could probably do it relatively quickly. But, um, you know, sometimes a lot of thought doesn't get put into like, well, how do you get out of it? Right. Well, if it's successful, hopefully you won't need 
an exit strategy, but you always have to have it, right? Right. right. Um, and and, and would just one note, the residential piece, um, we did have a number of comments and input on Alta's original design. And so I just want to make sure that once the contract is finalized with them, the new one, that they pick up where they left off, take our comments into consideration and come up with a revised. It may not be a monumental task, but I just want to make sure that is lost and that we have a chance to see that. That's all. Sure. No, that's good feedback. Um, you know, our, our initial steps would be to finalize that design because um, it was never fully finalized. We got the comments, then we kind of stopped. Right. So if you'd, uh, if, if the commission prefers that we um, have one quick cycle through the commission to talk about that before we take it to council for um, approval, then that's, that's no, there's no problem with that. But yeah, that's the leading edge of the whole thing would be that would be first and in parallel with this mission work, but first. Okay. Yeah, we, we already have uh, almost all the materials for the residential section already uh, purchased and stored. Terrific, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Abelson, uh, Vice Chair Dunlap. Thank you, Chair, and I will try to keep this under three minutes. Um, you know, are you on target? Yes, I think you are on target. Thank you for presenting this to us. Um, I know a piece of this that we talked about in the past was the neighborhood signage piece. Um, however, I think it's the right direction forward to leave that out. Um, looking at your public works department, not knowing you don't have a lot of capacity to be replacing those signs. There's a lot of thought that really goes into them when you put them in the residential streets and they get knocked over. Um, they block sight distance at driveways. And um, so I think it's probably best not to proceed with, with that sort of um, mass signage of, of South Pass, um, just based on capacity of your team um, and what I see. Um, as far as goal one, I would add the word um, and evaluate. So envision and evaluate the, the um, potential permanent reconfigurations. I think you spell it out later in your discussion, um, but I think um, since we are collecting so much feedback as part of this, it's important to be stated as part of the goal. Um, you know, if funding permits, I would recommend or suggest uh, some sort of microsite, um, like a web page. Um, if someone can't attend one of the in-person events, they can find out about it. And like Commissioner um, Hughes suggested some online survey and mailers to the people who are affected by the project. Um, and I think maybe lastly, thinking thinking about the agreements and the expectations with the businesses around parklets. Um, I think it's something that a lot of people will be excited about in the beginning, but um, four months from now, um, how can we ensure that these parklets are still looking fresh, that they're being swept and cleaned, um, that the furniture is in the right place. Um, I know with the temporary demonstration that's happened during the pandemic, um, you see sometimes the sales above dining and um, there are issues with fire code with that as far as like if they catch on fire um, what happens will they drip um, flames on people um, so I some sort of expectations with the businesses around those parkers would be good and if they don't if they aren't being maintained um, maybe they could be moved even somewhere not on Mission Street throughout the city someone who has the capacity to maintain it and maybe the chamber can assist with that because I'm sure a lot of businesses are really struggling with staff right now. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of my feedback. It's excited to see it um, moving forward and um, can't look forward to it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Vice Chair Dunlap. Um, I had a few questions and comments. Um, a couple months ago, this commission had approved um, standard furniture in the um, footprint of the existing parklets, uh, which our understanding at that time was a three month demonstration. Um, has that morphed into a different configuration for the six month demonstration? 
Um, so there, there hasn't been any change there. Uh, what we wound up doing was we purchased a variety of furniture um, to have like different types of uh, in, installations for, you know, to try things out. Um, there was only one set that was, you know, kind of set up like restaurant style. So um, to Vice Chair Dunlap's um, uh, point, we would have to go a little further with the businesses in order for them to probably, I mean, this is, a, this is a policy decision that hasn't been made yet, but probably provide their own furniture for dining that adheres to some sort of uh, guideline. Um, but we haven't made any changes. Like the furniture that was ordered is from the same company that um, produces the parklets. And so all of that is being generated together, but it was basically a, a handful of different types of uh, units that were, the majority of them were geared towards like um, short duration, um, you know, uh, areas to hang out, but not really, um, not really amenable to like, you know, anything other than just sitting for a brief amount of time. Right, but the main point I'm getting to is, um... We had identified standard features for the parklets, if you will, that would be in the footprint of the existing parklets for a three month demo. Now we're considering a six month demo, but would those parklets be in the footprint of the existing ones or would that be with, uh, it's not stated here, but implicit in this discussion is lane reduction. Um, so they, yeah, they were designed to be within the footprint of the existing parklets. Um, how that affects the road diet, um, you'll come to see when we bring the design um, back. But as far as measurements go, we utilize the, the existing parklet dimensions in, in, in how we ordered the, the parklets and the furniture. Okay, so the footprint stayed the same, but the lane configuration might change yes exactly yeah and so um in theory at the end of the project uh the parklets could uh remain you know in one in one circumstance but the roadway would return back to its original configuration so would it be possible to have a temporary implementation for three months and then the council could decide should we extend the experimental period to six months and then at six months there's a decision to go final is there any reason why that could not occur so that's really good feedback um what we could we could do um in a proposed scenario is uh structure this to be a three month um, and then another three months if we'd like to continue it. Um, we wouldn't likely be able to move from a temporary configuration to a permanent configuration. We would have to pull the configuration at the end um, because a permanent configuration would require, you know, um, environmental analysis, like other steps that we're not taking because this is a temporary installation. But certainly we could um, stage it in such a way that we don't commit to a six month off the bat, but we design it to do it that way if, if, you know, if that's a better approach. Okay. Uh, the things that I would like to see, um, first of all, I'd like to see you know, a report that identifies the impacts, but also identifies feasible mitigation measures. For example, we know Mission Meridian is the, I, I consider it the second most um, congested intersection in the city at five o'clock. And uh, a simple mitigation measure would be to just increase the, the green time for mission so that uh, you get two lanes worth of, of green time there. Or you may have to, um, prohibit left turns because with a one lane operation, uh, one car may be stopped to make a left turn or maybe stopped to make a right turn because of pedestrian traffic. 
and uh, you have no lanes moving at all. So I, I think there needs to be some sort of identification of impacts and mitigation measures. Um, the discussion and the uh, drawings we've seen thus far envisions two lanes on Mission Street, one east, one west. And I think that that should be evaluated. But I'd also like to see evaluation of a three lane operation. Today we have four lanes. We've seen the operation with two lanes. I'd like to suggest a three lane operation where the center lane of the three would be the left turn lane. And that way you don't have that lane blocked when there's opposing traffic or when pedestrians are in the crosswalk. And uh, that would still give uh, more width of the street to the parklets or for whatever other activities identified, uh, more, more room than there is today. But I, I'd, I'd like to at least see that uh, evaluated. That, those would be my comments. Sure. So, um, you know, just briefly in response to those comments, um, you know, we could we could uh, craft this proposal in such a way that while we're implementing the uh, residential section after uh, one, you know, brief feedback loop through the commission and then adoption by the council, um, we the next step we would take would actually be bringing forward the uh, impact report. And I Terrace did do that evaluation with no left turn um, and its effects on the area. Um, and then suggested mitigation measures for the commission to uh, consider. Um, and then with that, I think at least one of the iterations of the early design along mission, we did have some three lane sections um, at intersections to allow left turns. Um, and then basically those that third center lane transitioned into you know, planters or, or something um, that was kind of like a temporary median, but we could, you know, as we analyze that with you with the design, um, with the data, if you felt uh, that we should consider something else, we could do that through that session. Okay, so they did evaluate that. Then. Yeah, they did uh, evaluate okay. that. That's the, that's the last piece is actually putting it all together because the initial design was a planning effort uh, that wasn't informed by the data. That's the next step is to bring those two things together. Okay, thank you. And I will we'll go back for one more round and I'll be listening to see if we have a motion to give them guidance on, on these matters. So we'll go to Kim. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a really quick question. You mentioned that we ordered a variety of pieces and looking at the various selections that we had, not knowing what exactly. Did we order any planters? Because the concern I have is with water. And if we're gonna put anything in, we need to make sure that it's drought tolerant, that we're not gonna use a lot of water. I don't know how we're gonna you know, uh, service them on a regular basis. I mean, succulents or something, but do we have that? Are we concerned about that? Because that's gonna yeah. be something it's been something we've talked about. Um, we did order a, a, a number of planters in three different sizes. They're right now they're stacked up at our yard. Um, uh, and so there has been discussion about how we would go about that. Um, there's you know devices that have been suggested that sort of slow release water into the planters. But of course, as part of this configuration, we'd have to figure out how that would work how many planters we put in, um, how, you know, drought talent planting plants, of course, but um, how would the watering maintenance work on these? So we, it didn't just look like we were abandoning plants along there, the there, roadway. Arizona has been doing where they, because of their, they've been doing where they're putting in um, various colored rock mm. in configuration. So you might be mixing tonals and as one way to use planters without using any kind of live um, materials. So there's just some other, you know, ways we could maybe think about it because I'm, you know, water is going to be an important issue. Thank you. That was okay. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Abelson. Okay, I'm going to be surprisingly brief. Um, so I, I've heard a number of observations and comments about the components of 
the plan or the installations and um, we could talk about that for hours because I don't agree with some of the things that have been said. But my understanding is that what we're being asked to do is to talk about specifically the scope of the agreement, not the elements of each program and what's going to be in the residential piece or what's going to be in the Mission Street piece, because that's a whole nother conversation, which I think would involve the consultant to come back and talk to us about it. So um, I am on board with what staff is proposing. I like uh, Chair Fisher's creative idea about a three month and then another three month. It makes me nervous because what happens after the first three months? So that means there's going to be um, more hearings, more staff time, more debate, more controversy uh, right in the middle of the project. And the city council is gonna be at another decision point in three months. Um, and there's, I'm, I'm guessing there's gonna be competing views, right? So to me, and I, I look to, the, to my fellow commissioners is, what is the most reasonable amount of time or what is the more reasonable amount of time to give a demonstration project um, like the one we're talking about on mission? Is three months enough? Um, or does it really need a fuller six month period to fully, we're fully evaluated. I'm just worried about phasing this and creating additional, additional unnecessary work um, when we're not gonna have, I don't think three months, we're gonna have clear answers personally. Um, so that's my only concern about what Chair Fisher was suggesting. Um, the bottom line, I'm on board with what's being proposed. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, and I think we're gonna have opportunity to talk about the components of the two different programs moving forward. And I am interested in seeing the reports from the ITERIS regarding the impacts of what we're proposing whenever we have that chance. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Abelson, uh, Vice Chair Dunn. Um, thank you, Chair. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure um, if um, Commissioner Abelson, um, if not agreeing was over the, the Slow Street signage piece going broad. Um, and that, if that's what the commission wants to see, then that's what the commission wants to see. I just, um, I just want to share how much work that is. And it doesn't seem like a lot but it really, really is. Um, if you put up um, 200 signs, probably around 60%, um, what would that be? Like 120 of them would be knocked over um, by people turning. Um, those things have to be replaced every single day. Um, you see the ones, the, the flexible posts with the pedestrian paddles on Fremont. And about once a week, those are knocked over. Um, when the delineator gets knocked over, it's a kind of a tripping hazard. And um, while it's, it's a really nice to have, it, it does take a lot of time and a lot of, a lot of staff capacity, just kind of away from everything else and your maintenance people are running all over the city to replace those all the time. As well as um, on narrow streets, it's difficult to find a place to put it. Um, when you put it against the curb, um, sometimes it blocks the driveway, and so people can't see entering and exiting, um, exiting the driveway. The other places where you have wider streets to put them on the center line, um, the, those get hit um, all the time from turning vehicles, and you end up, um, your city is a lot smaller than other agencies, so maybe it won't be as burdensome. However, it will probably be at least a handful of signs every day that that you are replacing if, if it was like a broad deployment on every single street um, in the city. So that's just my, uh, my experience kind of with that program. And it, it takes away from uh, these more transformative things like on Mission or like on Grand or like on Oak and other projects. So um, that's my experience with that. Um, as far as like other things that came up just as commissioner Hughes was talking about the planters. Um, I'm gonna be like the safety person and say, really think about the aggregate in those devices um, because when a, if a car crashes into it um, and the planter breaks, then that aggregate becomes like a projectile. So you wanna make sure that 
um, whatever's draining in there um, doesn't spray um, and end up crashing into people or or um, or businesses and that sort of thing. So that's those are all my comments. Um, I don't know if my commissioners would entertain adding the word evaluate to it um, because to me, envision is kind of a scary word because um, I'm like, what vision? Who's envisioning? Um, you know, and I think if we add the word envision and evaluate, then it um, it makes me feel as a resident feel that I have some sort of um, stay into it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Vice Chair Dunlap. Um, so what I'd like to do is have the uh, commission take action the three motions on one, two, and three. I would so move that we um, approve the proposal as, as outlined here with um, Director uh, Gerber noting some of the comments that were made and suggestions. And then to the point of uh, Vice Chair Dunlap, we could look at adding the word evaluate to the language that's in the three important uh, directoral, directoral points that I would so move for approval. Uh, do we have a second on that? I'll second. Okay. Um, I would like to see if you would entertain a friendly amendment to number one, adding the words and evaluate. Um, but also state evaluate a two, th three, and four lane operation. Now I'm told that that they've done that, but we haven't seen it yet. So I would certainly take that amendment. Okay, you considered a friendly amendment. Yeah. Um, I just have a question. Yeah. When you say noting the comments, what does that mean? Um, the fact that we talked about the planters that there was suggestion about the lanes that we talked about, um, neighborhood signage, um, capacity, microsite, mailers, those kind of things in lieu of this whole scope of project. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I certainly want staff to consider everything we say, but I th think for clarity, we should clarify exactly what we're so I, I would just, and I'm fine with adding and evaluate it. It's perfectly fine. But I, I might want to suggest just removing that, noting the comments. That's fine. It's sort of vague and okay. unclear. That's and, all. and we'll note that we're not being asked to comment on the all the components at this time. That's yes. um, So we had the friendly amendment. Do we have a, a second to the friendly amendment? Or do, do we need to do that? I don't think so. No. On a friendly, I guess we don't. So is the mo sorry, here. I, I was, so is the motions to approve the staff recommendation, adding the words and evaluate in item one. Yes. And then and the two, three, two, two, three lanes. Evaluate two, three, and four lane and four lane options. Oper operation. For Mission Street. Yes. That would be like a Item four or something like that on this, or is that? No, I, I, part of I had thought it would be part, part of, of two. one because potential permanent reconfigurations okay. would be what it is today for, what it might be two, what it might be three. Okay, got it. Might it make sense to include that in the discussion below? I should, I'm fine with putting it up top if you want to put it up top. But if we if the discussion section can spell that out in the report, uh, could you clarify what you mean? Oh no, I'm saying if you're if we're going to specify two, three, four lane options, we're kind of specifying what the the reconfigurations, oh, sure. right? You know, so in, instead of putting it straight up top in the goals, um, including a paragraph in the discussion about it. Well, I, I think the way that we'll handle this is. Um, you know, given your recommendation, uh, we'll design the proposal as such and consider all 
you know, okay. make sure there's enough space. And I mean, by space, I mean, um, time and money in the proposal to um, evaluate all the items that you're talking about tonight and make sure that when we're coming back that we're addressing these items, mm -hmm. but you won't necessarily see your comments in the next step to council because the next step to council is primarily to get a proposal that's significantly over okay. our, our spending limits to- Okay, then we council. can make yeah, this but whole You'll see this want. information again, but it won't be <laughs> right, part great. of the report to council. Great, Okay. yeah. I'm fine with that. Okay, we have a motion, a second. Uh, any final comments? If none, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, four zero, thank you. Okay, that was our uh, one action item. Now we have communications. Um, communication from the uh, city council liaison, Councilman Kerma. Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, city council will meet tomorrow and we have uh, one of our major action items is the uh, measure M funding proposals that the commission has um, reviewed, I think twice now and provided some really excellent commentary and descriptives that I think will help the council understand exactly what's being done. You may remember there was some con um, concern about how the um, Columbia Street restriping project would be carried out. I think there's been a pretty authoritative way of describing it in a way that's compelling. So um, that's going to be before the council. Um, and I'm pleased to see all the efforts that everyone has made to um, really bolster the merits of that of that project. Um, you know, we could talk about all the other projects that we've talked about ad nauseum here at the commission. Uh, you should know that there's significant public comment coming in about uh, the Orange Grove um, widening proposal. And uh, there's a significant number of residents as well as others who are making public comments about that. So uh, if you have a strong uh, position on the, uh, the proposal, which is to um, reverse the lane uh, conversion, the lane merge, um, uh, you might wanna make a public comment so that uh, the commission, the council can hear directly from the concerns that I think you guys have you've looked at pretty in depth. Uh, as Director Gerber said, there have been, there, there is accident data, crash data that uh, is directly related to the uh, reverse curve merge on Orange Grove, and that will be considered as well. So I think this will be a very interesting discussion. Um, the city council continues to work on the budget. Staff has been extremely proactive in providing really helpful really good, incisive uh, information to the council so we understand it at a pretty granular level. Um, the fact that the seating in the round that you see here today is actually designed for every council member to ask every department head about the budget. So uh, we are you know, having a cabinet level discussion uh, with, all the, with all the department heads. So we are getting a very deep dive that's been uh, impressive to see that and daunting to get on top of all the details. Um, as far as other items coming on tomorrow's agenda, uh, we have a proclamation relating to uh, the support for the and standing in solidarity with the people of Ukraine, proclamation of Public Works Week, in which Public Works is holding a, uh, an open house and a lunch. So thank you, Public Works, for all that you do and will continue to do. Uh, we have a strategic plan uh, update to see how the progress that we're making on the council strategic plan that we set uh, over the summer. Uh, we have some other receive and file issues, uh, various things. Uh, we have an ordinance going in uh, on disclosure and reporting of military equipment that was pulled from last council's agenda and we've uh, made a revision. This is something we need to do to comply with state law. And we have, a, a, I would say a somewhat modest uh, commission reorganization proposal here. 
that does not affect MTIC at all, but does uh, affect the senior youth, uh, parks and rec, and animal commissions. So um, that has been talked about at the council for quite a while. And then the Measure M sub-regional program funding that I talked about before. Uh, the JPA to approve that will meet on June 9th. And uh, as you may know, I'm the board, the council designated person who sits on that board. So look forward to uh, uh, voting in favor of whatever the outcome is tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't have too much. I just had a quick question. Um, Ted, you might be able to answer. Do we know our data, obviously traffic vehicles, et cetera. Do we have data on what our usage has been for our still relatively new chargers on mound for uh, the electric chargers? Like how it's, how it's doing, how is it going? Do we find that, have we heard that there's, because the plug-in, um, plug share and all of that, Gets a lot of comments, so you could we could find out like if someone's saying, "Oh, it's always full, it's not available, or it's always available," or it would be curious to know because obviously the electrification of transportation is so important, and to know kind of how that's doing for us as a city because it took a long time to get that in there. Sure, um, we don't have that data readily available. Uh, those um, are exclusively operated by EVGo, so much as to say they they own the, it's their Edison account that they're hooked up to. So we don't have that level of information, but um, we could ask if there's some sort of high level, you know, privacy wiped version of that, that they could give us for usage off of their um, network to see what the usage is. You know, I know from personal experience, they're in operation all the time coming to city hall. So uh, we could see if that's, they can give us some sort of uh, information on that. share kind of is that that EV community that kind of shares, you know, who's got who's which ones are broken, which ones are good, and so it'd be interesting to even go on and kind of see what they're saying, mm -hmm. um, because it, it you know as we look to the future, do we need more and where and that kind of thing. So I sure, um, to kind of focus on that for a moment. We do have. Uh, you know, a plan for chargers on the on the other side of the street, um, on the city hall side, that could be publicly used uh, and off hours. So city hall's not operating, um, so it would be good to see the type of um, usage over there to it's inform the one that. One thing that is coming that's starting you're starting to also see is um, doing charging off street lights. Yes, I've I've tried to use those myself sometimes. Um, yeah. Uh, we have plans for that lot, um, like uh, solar plans that we're trying to work out. Um, uh, so it would be interesting to take a look at that and see what the demand is and see if we want to incorporate additional charging infrastructure over there. As we look, you know, again, future, it might be like, oh, it's somewhere down the Arroyo where there's those lights when people are down there without having to put huge charger infrastructure in. Um, obviously, you know, so it's sure it's fast but it depends on what you're what you're pulling for the light. yeah typically the street light connections are just like as much power as you get from an outlet so you don't really get a whole lot whereas the ones that are in the mound lot and are are level three they're like right. the dc fast chargers they're like yeah. um but yeah we could take a look at that and see if we can at least access the information thank you that was the only thing thank you commissioner hughes commissioner abelson thank you chair fisher so i have a few things um, first, a huge thank you to Director Gerber and his staff for all of their support with the uh, South Pass Sedina Educational Foundation's Party Gras fundraiser this weekend. Uh, they provided a lot of valuable support um, uh, in advance of the, of the event, and we, it's, it was really appreciated, including but not limited to uh, putting up the banner over Fair Oaks to give it uh, additional exposure as well as the barricades and other items. Um, second, also a huge thank you to Director Gerber and city staff for upping the notification of city council and commission meetings. I've noticed in the last few weeks, uh, uh, 
a huge increase in the volume of notifications and not only of general items, but also particular commission meetings, including tonight's, which, which is terrific. So I think anything we can do to get the word out there that all these different bodies are meeting, I think is terrific. So <clears throat> thank you very much for carrying that out. Um, and then in light of uh, council liaison premise comments regarding measure M, um, I will be submitting comments. Um, and I just want to make sure, and it'll be interesting to see, of course, what happens tomorrow night, that you know, it's important to remember for the city council's sake that one Orange Grove used to be four lanes uh, until about 15 plus years ago when one of the Rogan funded projects was implemented that reduced one, removed one of the lanes and it resulted in a serious increase in accidents and safety issues on that corridor, which were brought to our attention by residents. And we've been trying to address it. Um, and we spent lots of time looking at the street and analyzing um, the information and coming up with suggestions and looking at different ways to make things better. And the idea of relying on Pasadena to reduce a lane north of Columbia um, is a good one, but unfortunately they're not interested in it. Um, and it's been, it's been visited years ago and it was visited more recently. Um, so I'm hopeful that the council will look at everything and not just the vocal minority and those who choose to submit comments for tomorrow night's meeting and uh, make a reasoned and important decision because I'm really concerned about safety on the street. Um, we've seen so many lamp, uh, lamp poles knocked down um, and there've been injury accidents and non-injury accidents. So um, it's a concern and I'd, I'd be great for this commission to actually make a difference. Um, and I think that would be one of them, but it'll be up to the council. Um, and that's it. Thanks very much. Thank you, Commissioner Abelson, uh, Vice Chair Dunlap. No comment at this time. Thank you. Okay, I, I'm going to make a comment uh, because I think it is so compelling. Uh, there were, there's been some mention throughout the meeting regarding uh, Measure M and the Orange Grove Avenue project. And I think uh, the staff of the Public Works Department has made a real breakthrough in using the Switters data, the statewide database of all collisions, where you can look at them and slice them and dice them in different ways. But uh, uh, staff is, is learning how to say, what were the accidents on street A from street B to street C over this period? And um, commissioner, or uh, rather public works director uh, Gerber shared the information with me for Orange Grove Avenue. The data went back to about 11 years. There's about an eight month lag, so we don't get a full 12 years out of it, but about 11 years plus or minus. And um, it was so compelling. And I must say, I've never seen such a pattern before in all of my career. Um, I analyzed the southbound collisions from Columbia Street to the on-ramp as reported in the Switters database. Uh, there were 53 collisions in that segment over the 11 year period. 50 of those were related to the lane drop, the rear end and side swipe accidents. Um, that's 94% of all accidents in that segment going southbound are related to the uh, uh, lane drop. Um, I then looked at the number that were coded as ran off road or fixed object. In other words, those hitting the curb or hitting the street light pole. And there were 41 such accidents over that period. That's astonishing. Uh, generally, in my experience and looking at um, traffic patterns, if you start to see five of the same thing, you, you start to look into it further. 10 is very compelling. 41 says take action. Uh, as indicated in the report to council, there's those number of accidents, but the merge length that is provided or could be provided would not and does not meet the uh, national and state guidelines in the MUTCD. So the city is in, ha has to make a decision regarding what to do and, and its tort liability position in that. So. I felt compelled to, to make that statement because uh, it's going to be considered by the council tomorrow. And I plan to be present at, at the council meeting tomorrow. 
Thank you very much. And now we have uh, any other comments you want to make, to staff lays on comments. I'll be very brief uh, because most of the things that I wanted to discuss tonight, we brought out in other items. Um, so the only other thing I have to mention is that um, we are trying to fill commission uh, commissioner positions throughout the city. Um, and uh, so I would like to uh, promote uh, as especially on this commission where we have an open seat, uh, promote uh, the public to uh, apply uh, for to be a commissioner in any sense. Uh, there's a lot of different opportunities um, and for a variety of interests of different commissions um, and particularly you know, the interest of uh, mobility uh, and transportation infrastructure. Um, we're in need of, of people to apply um, and uh, um, contribute and uh, serve their community uh, as an advisor to the council, very important position. Um, so that's all the comments I have tonight. Okay, thank you. And with that, I'm gonna congratulate the commission and keeping the meeting just under two hours. We started at uh, 6.46 and we're adjourning at um, 8.44. So thank you very much. We'll see you in June. Thank you. <laughs>